This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories. And welcome to week 17 of the Arrowverse Weekly Review. This week I'll be going over the new episodes of Naomi, Superman and Lois, and The Flash. And, yeah, let's just get right into it. And the Naomi episode I think this week was, I think, was okay. It wasn't the best episode ever, but it did reveal a lot of the stuff about the show and the mysteries being put into it. So I think it was decent. As I said, this isn't my favorite show ever. I think it's good for the people that, you know, it could be intended for. I can see that it's a good show. It's just, you know, not really for me. And, yeah, I think that it has been decent so far. I'm still interested to see where the mystery goes. But this is a show that I am not going to be rewatching. And one that, if it has any crossovers, is the only ones I will really rewatch. Like episodes in Supergirl and Batwoman. So, let's move on to. Superman and Lois, and this was an amazing episode, one of my favorite of this season, maybe even the show. I haven't really decided if it is going to be my favorite of this season so far, but it's up there. We have some crazy things happening. So I'll look at the different storylines, going from worst to best, and I think the worst one is... Probably the one with Sarah and her father, and that's mainly because the other storylines were way better, and my least favorite scene of the episode was one where Sarah goes and meets with her friend. That's mainly because it's the first interaction with this character after some kind of awkwardness with them before, so... I definitely don't have the strongest kind of a connection with this character, which is why I felt a little odd, and we'll get used to her a little more as the show continues, since they're going to keep their friendship. And she also decides to reconnect with her father. The next storyline that we cover is Jonathan taking X Kryptonite, and he decides to by the ex-Kryptonite his girlfriend took and is selling and he's the one who gets busted for it. He refuses to tell where he got it from and is taking the full blame for this. He might be expelled and well Lois and well once his father gets out are really furious at him and it seems like he's not going to have any type of social life until, well, he is probably moves out. Even if he could, because this may ruin his life completely. But with it, we get some really interesting things with it. Including the part that kind of Jordan is getting blamed with him. Since he didn't tell his mom. Although, he didn't, you know, take any of the drugs. So it seems like from the description of next 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 week's two weeks from now episode, which is the next episode, that he's also going to be getting a talking to by his parents. But going on to my absolute favorite storyline from this episode, we have to go into the storyline of Superman being imprisoned by the now former lieutenant. Anderson, and he is imprisoned with his brother, Tal Rowe, inside of the prison made for Kryptonians, and he is there. His brother actually gets tortured, so one of them will reveal the location, and Superman sends them to his Fortress of Solitude to distract them for a little bit, as he can make out a plan to escape with his brother. So neither of them gets tortured for this information. So from here, they pretend to fight. 
and use this as an opportunity to be able to escape. And once they do, they go to Hell's Fortress. But now believing that Superman is the enemy of the United States, Anderson goes and both takes the ex Kryptonite and goes after them with many Kryptonite weapons. Breaking in, he goes and attacks both Superman and Talro, and the two of them are being beaten down pretty badly. With Kryptonite gas in the air, the powers are already weakened, and they stand no real chance. So, the hologram of their mother decides to let Bizarro go so he can go and save them. Sadly, this does not end up going the way that they would think it will. Instead, Anderson kills Bizarro and critically wounds Hal Rowe. Superman is able to save his brother and returns him to prison. But now. He does have a distrust at the back of his mind, but also he knows that Anderson has stepped over the line and Anderson is now on the run, being a fugitive, and decides to team up with Allie, who Superman warned of earlier, and gives her the bizarro pendant. And this is going to lead into a very interesting episode next week, not next week, in two weeks. Which I am extremely excited for. But now let's go back to The Flash, which has been on a break since Armageddon has finished at the end of last year. And we had a great episode of The Flash this week. Definitely not as good as Armageddon, but it was still a really good episode following Bart and Nora. We got to see them go back in time and interact with the events when Barry was still in a coma just weeks after the particle accelerator exploded. We get to see them both make Joe not get a promotion early so they can fix the timeline and bring Jay's wife, Joan, back since the t changes in the timeline either for them interacting with the Godspeed War or from Armageddon have brought Jay Garrick back, but he is married to someone else, so they are able to go and change that. And then after that, they inspire the Royal Flush Gang, the second, maybe third iteration of it, to form. I think there might have been two in Arrow. I know there's definitely one. Can't remember if there was a second one. Although it would technically be the second one since the third, the one that I think might show up later in Arrow would have been in the later seasons, which would have taken place later. But I can't remember if they appeared again or not. Still, I think that this is a really interesting storyline. And also interesting that there was two Royal Flush Gangs made by completely different people in two completely different cities that, you know, came out within the same year. Same years, I think, of what one was in Arrow season one, and the other one would have happened, yeah, and basically in the middle of Arrow season two. So, yeah, within a year, literally, like the Royal Flush Gang, I think, appeared at the beginning of that year. So, in the same year, there's two different Royal Flush Gangs. That was pretty interesting, and yeah, we got to see them take them down. In a different way because they couldn't interact with it because it did become a fixed point after their changes. So we get to see them saving everyone and relatively returning the timeline to normal. And then they're explaining all of this to Jay. And finally, we can see both the scene of Iris and Eddie meeting 
and in the present day we see the effects of the time sickness and yeah, this was a good episode but i literally have like no more time to record so the video that was Australia today the arkham batman vs insomniac spider-man that's not going to come up either tomorrow at the earliest or next week i do think it's still getting ready for midterms and everything so there may not be as much content next week if, if there is i'm going to be recording it all over the weekend but yeah that's just going to be delayed but still i do hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all in the next episode of legends and theories thank you for watching this episode of legends and theories please subscribe like the video share the video leave a comment Check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.